Things got pretty real lately, haven't they? It's time for Survival Garden. Buy the dip, 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 buy the dip. Okay, so we have something really important to do today. We are putting in this big barrel right here. This is our cistern. So this cistern needs a slab to sit on top of. So we spent quite a bit of time moving fill, clearing an area, moving a lot of rocks, and then uh, we've dug our little spot to cast a slab underneath with a footer, and we are just about to put the concrete in it. So come over and take a look at where we dug. So right here is going to be the foundation for it. It's gonna be 6,000 pounds, so I kind of overbuilt with this uh, rebar here. This is 5 8 rebar, and then we can run a gutter right down here along the edge of the cabin. So our gray water's coming out here into our little gray water spot. And then the big barrel will go right here. It is a 600 gallon cistern. And the reason I wanted to put it right here is because there was already a higher spot here and I can actually water crops down the bottom if I have to by using the pressure coming off of it. So once this gets cast, then I am up a little bit. I can cut down on the side here and make a spot that's it's where it's high enough that I can stick a five gallon bucket or something underneath it. But we've got to get up to that later. First, we've got to get this thing cast. And it's got a six inch uh, footer beneath the edge of all of the board. I'm no expert at concrete. I'm sure I'm probably doing this wrong, but uh, there you go. That's how we do things in tiny house expat living. <laughs> It's like God decided to wait until we put up a rain barrel and then give us a huge amount of rain. Oh, this is awesome. There we go. I'm gonna dig below this next, give it a little bit of space, but we can actually fit a five gallon bucket under it, kind of dig in and make a little area there. Gutter worked well. It's the first time I ever put a gutter up. Woo! This is a June plum tree that I planted one year ago and it is 16 feet easily. I buried my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spoon You know, my website is called thesurvivalgardener.com because I believed at some point things could get weird I did not trust the U.S. banking system. I managed to dodge the housing crash because I could see it was coming. And I jumped out. And, you know, I called my first website floridasurvivalgardening.com because at that point we had a pretty low budget. The economy was not looking real hot. We were coming out of the recession there. And I said, you know, I said, really, gardening is about feeding yourself. First of all, I'm not interested that much in, you know, ornamental gardening and that sort of thing. I like plants in general, 
but gardening to feed the family and to primarily kind of give yourself a little bit of security in uncertain times has been my primary focus for a long, long time. It's very important to me because I have nine children. <laughs> having, uh, having enough food in the ground is, is really important. So, you know, even, even when things were looking like they were really good, at the beginning of this year, I was planting lots of food. And now, obviously, the entire world has been turned upside down. So, I have been doing almost nothing but gardening and planting. The kids are not doing school right now. We're working in the garden together. We are planting up, we're storing water, we're doing all kinds of, the sort of stuff has been sped up. We would have done it anyways, but now we're speeding up. And it's a really good time for those of us in North America, uh, because, and in Europe as well, because we're coming into spring. And a lot of you guys are probably freaking out right now and saying, okay, shoot, now I really have to know how to garden. Now I really, really need to plant. So you could see in a lot of my videos the various staples that I recommend. I had a, you know, top 10 staples for the tropics. I did a survival gardening presentation some while ago for a prepper online event thing. And that stuff's up there. You can also see lots of stuff on composting. But what I'm gonna tell you is, do not trust in the government to get you through this. Do not trust in even having enough food storage. That's good for a while. Some of you are gonna do fine on food storage, but I'll tell you, fresh food is really the best. If you continuously go and plant and plant and plant, and plant more, you've got a, you know, a source of food that's ongoing. Like today, these are yam hills that I'm making. I'm experimenting with planting yams in a different way. In the clay, they really, uh, they really want to expand and grow and the clay is kind of hard on them. And I have done big banks where I've planted them in there, but I'm doing individual hills because I saw another guy doing this. So I'm going to make yam hills right here. These yams are food coming in November, December, January, you know, end of this year, beginning of next year. It's when this comes in. But for food that's coming in right now, I'm planting beans, and I'm also planting corn, and I am planting other staple carbohydrate crops. So we've got them coming in the short term. The beans are probably your fastest, probably one of your fastest sources of um, decent, decent nutrition and calories that you're going to get. You can get green beans in less than 60 days. But if you let the green beans dry, then you could get hard beans, shell beans, which are a good source of protein, storable, storable nutrition. Let me show you here why I am using this area. I know you guys are like, why is he doing this in the shade? This right here is a head of a yam, the top of a yam that was uncovered here underneath the mandarin tree in the shade. Gets a little bit of sun. This is the top. This is, there's tons of yam going down under here. There's probably, this may be a 15 to 20 pound yam. And so when I say yams are something that comes in, you know, end of the year in winter, this is harvest season for yams. So I'm getting close to planting season for yams again. Yams have a pronounced dormancy. If you are in Florida and you need a survival crop, this is a top survival crop, Dioscoria alata. Dioscoria alata, not sweet potatoes, yams. Sweet potatoes are another good one, but this would be my primary choice for a survival staple in Florida. Um, it's a lot like a white potato, more starchy. It's not like a sweet potato at all. It's a, it's a starch. You can make very good mashed yams that are a lot like mashed potatoes. Um, but I am taking, I said, well, okay, this thing is doing great in the shade over here. It climbs up into the tree. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna just go ahead and put these little hills in and then this area will be more yams. So we're looking one year out. But for right now, if you're freaking out and thinking I need to plant a garden, there's a few things I would tell you, okay. First of all, calories first. Calories first, nutrition, crops second, and then thirdly, the fun stuff. 
right? So if it's cool season where you are, like you're in the middle of the country, it's still cool season, put in turnips. Turnips are like one of those ones that will get you through. You can put in carrots. You could put in uh, daikons. They're good. They're not super filling, but they're a good. They're a good root crop for the cool season. As soon as you can get potatoes in the ground. If you're in any place where you can grow regular old Irish potatoes, Idaho potatoes, whatever you want to call them, potatoes are your number one survival crop. That is the. That's the top one for for most of the temperate regions. Potatoes are the way to go. If you are um, in a place where you can grow corn, you have a long enough season to grow corn, plant grain corn varieties. Through the south, go for dent corn varieties or any southern varieties that you can find, like like grit, corn for grits, right? So Hickory King is a good one, um, but there's plenty of corn varieties. Corn is a really good survival grain. You know, if you can get a grain mill, it's really funny because they're called Corona grain mills. You get a Corona grain mill, I don't actually have one, so I'm going to have to smash it. I'm going to have to make a mortar and pestle if I don't get one soon. Everything is breaking down and it's getting hard to get like basic supplies. I have not been able to get a grain mill. I used to have one, don't have one anymore. Um, but anyhow, you get your, your grain corn, right? So if you, can, if you live further north, grow flint corn. The flint corns have a shorter season, they grow faster. Uh, look for what did the Native Americans used to grow, what did the settlers used to grow. Concentrate on those but things. Be nice to your mother and always say please. Be loyal to friends and compost your enemies. Be nice to your also, mother what you're going to want to do is make sure that you are getting all the compostable materials that you can so you can feed the soil. Don't trust manure from commercial farms because there's a big problem with long-term herbicides. So you may want to save your own manure. Uh, we are actually composting you know, all of the all of the waste that comes through and we're composting human manure, which is good. If you if that freaks you out, you know, you don't want to do a bucket and sawdust type system to feed your gardens, um, you can just save urine. Urine is a really good fertilizer. That is your free source of fertilizer for your plants no matter what happens. You can also cut your own grass and make make compost out of the grass clippings. Save all of your um, food wastes, save you know, fish guts, whatever you got, compost it. Compost it. Make compost piles now. Look at my composting videos. Read, compost everything. If you don't have it, get it. Um, or, or get my free composting booklet on the newsletter sign up thing. Or just ask questions. Everybody will tell you, you know. Um, you don't have to do this amazing compost system. All you have to do is pile it up somewhere and keep the animals out of it and let it rot down. That material is going to feed your gardens as you get through the season. And another thing I would do if you can still go out and get some, go ahead and just get some commercial fertilizer because if you need food, that's the most important thing. This is not the time for ideological purity and organic purity. Go get yourself some 7 Dust, get yourself some 101010. Um, uh, you know, it's ideally you'd be growing organic all the way through, but a lot of that takes building the soil and takes long term thinking, and many people were just not there at this point. If you have a big pest problem, you don't want to lose your food. If you are trying to embrace organic purity and you haven't been mass composting already and you have a bunch of weak plants that aren't going to feed you, that's no good. All right, so, so don't be all ideological purity uh, at this point. If you're already great and you've composted and you can do organic, please do organic. That's great. That's the best way to do it. But otherwise, um, just grow with what you can grow with. So you plant your staple crops first. Further north, that might be grain corn. That's turnips, that is uh, potatoes primarily. You get further south, you can grow sweet potatoes as well. And you can grow dent corn varieties. Plant yourself lots of beans no matter where you are because beans are good protein and they're a fast, reliable thing. Um, I would prefer pole beans. Bush beans produced a little faster, but pole beans are stronger and they will take up less space in your garden. So you can see right here, all of these vines that I've got here, this is mostly pole beans and a few cucumbers for variety. <laughs> you don't wanna just eat beans all the time. Um, and then you compost everything. Discoria. Discoria. Now secondarily, plant your nutrition crops. You wanna be healthy. So if you're far south and you can do it, grow moringa a little further north, uh, kale is probably the most nutritious thing you can grow. 
kale and you can grow your cabbages, you can grow your mustards, um, grow lots of herbs that you can you can eat and season your food with. Most of, most of them are very, very good for you. Garlic is extremely good for you. If you can grow garlic, you can grow onions, grow those things. I unfortunately cannot where I am, but you can, so do it. And so then you've got your, your calories, you've got your nutrition, and you just, you're just you gonna compost everything, okay? So I'll show you. I am not particularly concerned about this. This would freak some people out. But hey man, survival situation. This is three month old composted human manure with a lot of, um, it's got a lot of uh, kitchen scraps and stuff in it too. This was sawdust based, sawdust based composting toilet system. I would not put this on a salad garden, but these yam hills right here are not going to be uh, a problem because they're going to be, this, this manure is going to be composting here in the ground and on the ground for another year. And basically a year is a safety point if you are composting human material. But if you're composting your own human waste, that's way safer than if you were to say, you know, compost the waste of San Francisco. Don't even do that. It's a bad idea. You don't want to be anywhere near that sort of thing. Um, especially not right now. <laughs> so, I'm gonna just throw this, I'm just throwing this stuff on the ground right here, and this will feed, this will be enough food to really grow some beautiful good yams over the course of the season, or it should be. If not, I'll throw a little more on, or I will, Go ahead and take some um, diluted urine and throw it on there or some homemade fish emulsion or something like that. But if you're, if you're really looking, you will find plenty of stuff to feed your plants. If you live near the ocean, you can go and get seaweed. If you have, um, you know, any, any kitchen scraps or anything, like I said, just make sure you're, you're composting them. Do not waste them right now. That's what you want. If you have animals, um, like farm animals, chickens, whatever, that's great because you can use their manure to feed your garden and it's really good. And you don't have the concerns that you would with human waste. Now after I do this, obviously I'm going to wash my hands. Obviously, we all have to wash our hands every day now. All the time, over and over again until our skin falls off. Otherwise, Corona Chan will get us. It'd be really ironic to be uh, like, survival gardening, right? And then I get some sort of horrible disease because of uh, not washing my hands when I'm handling the compost. That would be, that'd be hilarious. So Rachel just said to me, now people are gonna wanna know, does it smell? No, it doesn't. It's hot composted. I mean, it hot composted for weeks in a big pile. It got turned a couple of times. This stuff is, is pretty close to finished. I'm not sifting it or anything, but it, it's, it smells great. It just smells like soil at this point. Um, it's, it's only really, rough for like a week or two. You know, if you dig into it, you can still smell there's ammonia and stuff like that, but um, this is this is pretty finished stuff, and it's pretty good. All right, so let's ride this thing out. Um, it's time to take a look at the gardens, I would say. Now that I've given you the quick survival gardening talk, I think I better show you what I'm doing, right? So you know that I actually do this sort of thing. Um, <laughs> these beds over here are the tomato test beds. And you guys saw that I started my tomato tests before Corona Chan came to get us. So, if I had known what was coming in, in store for this year, I would have planted these things with sweet potatoes uh, or cassava or yams or something like that. But I have lots of tomatoes, so it looks like we'll have some uh, pasta sauce for the apocalypse. These guys right here are the Brad's Atomic Grape. I have a few of these. They're not looking great, but they're just starting to go into bloom. These are the white Tomasol, which is starting to make some fruit. This looks pretty good. These guys look like they're pretty happy here. Uh, that is a pure white tomato. It's supposed to have exceptional flavor. And, you know, I started these in the ground with direct seeding, and that did not work very well, so I'm gonna do transplants from now on. But as you can see, these direct seeded plants have now pulled through and they look really good. These guys right here are um, 
Pantano Romanesco, which is a large variety. Very nice. Supposed to be one of the tastiest tomatoes in the world from Rome. Over here we have the Berry's Crazy Cherry. These are a couple of transplants, I think. This is the Berry's, Berry's Crazy Cherry. And if you come down here and look at these blooms, these are the craziest blooms. This is a yellow cherry tomato and the blooms make blooms coming out of the sides of the blooms making blooms coming out of the sides of the blooms like like the panicles I guess you would call them are continuously descending and they keep making little fractal sets of blooms so this is really kind of cool this one's just starting to go and I'm excited about these this is kind of cool any place there was a gap I planted beans and I planted corn and I planted pak choy uh, pak choy is a good healthy green. It's very easy to grow in my climate. And then I, I uh, figured, well, I can always have lots of green beans. We've been getting green beans every day now, which is good. But these beds, as soon as the tomatoes are done, they're going to get transformed into calorie crops probably. I'm going to leave a few tomatoes in just because it's awesome. Um, but these are the carbon tomatoes, which are doing quite well. They really have, they have pulled through and they are blooming. And then we have over here, this is really cool. These are the lucid gem. I have four lucid gem tomatoes remaining, all of which are very healthy. And this one here is the earliest one. Look at this beautiful, look at that beautiful tomato. Isn't that cool? That is a cool tomato. I really like that. So. Dana in Hawaii said this one does really well in the tropics, and so far, no problems. It's a really kind of a leggy thing. It goes straight up, which is kind of cool. Uh, the mustards, obviously, are doing really well. And you, you saw me earlier in the video putting the strings around here. This is to mark off which ones we are saving for seeds. So we don't harvest any more leaves on these. We want them to put maximum growth into producing seed because everything is falling apart. So we have to save our own seeds. So that's what we do. You mark off a section of your production. We can keep eating these. This is plenty of mustard for us. These guys here, we don't disrupt them. We just let them go to seed. And I did the same thing in some of my bean beds. Carrots are doing pretty well. I put beans in between the carrots. The gaps right here, and you see this gap? I planted corn. This is, and I'm planting corn in little blocks every time I get a chance, because it's always good to have corn. We are getting some okra. Uh, this was an experiment with the corn over here. You can see how the corn is in these stations. I put four together. They look like they're doing pretty well. The okra is really starting to, to roll. We are getting lots of greens coming in from the, the pak choy. Getting lots of Lots of little green beans. These are bush beans. So the bush beans were kind of filling the gap and improved the soil at the same time. So I had a, I bought like a quarter pound of bush bean seeds from a farm supply place and I just planted them in every gap. So now we're eating the bush beans, but they'll get replaced with other things later. And I'm switching over production to pole beans now for the most part. I'm gonna do some seed saving with the bush beans because I like them for little tight spaces. And I like that I don't have to, have to make trellises, but bit by bit. We've got uh, our, a few cauliflowers here that survived. I had some problems with transplants before. And we are getting now uh, bell peppers coming in. The bell peppers are looking pretty good. Bell peppers are not a survival crop, obviously, but um, they will be nice. <laughs> Planted them before things got weird. We, today, one of my daughters forked up the beds out to here. We're going to extend the beds all the way to our access road here so we can get just that extra square footage. Four by four or so, four by four, four by four. When these bananas get bigger in the middle, we're not going to be able to plant vegetables around them, but we should be able to get at least one vegetable uh, planting before the bananas start to get too big. I've got a lot of tomatoes coming in right here. These are the heat masters that uh, a couple of my sons planted and more, more bell peppers. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Love those bell peppers. And I have just 
you know, when I see problems now, like as soon as the ants start digging around the base of the plants, I'm seven dusting them because this is now very, very serious. I'm not going to take losses. I'm not spraying the entire plants with poison. Seven dust is the only thing I'm using. But I'm not spraying the entire plants with poison because I don't want to kill all the, the bees and the butterflies and everything. But the ants get and they start digging around the base of the plants and they will destroy the root system in a couple of days and then the plant wilts and dies. It's the stupidest thing. I have no idea why they do it. Um, so I've just been blasting it with seven dust and it kills the ants and then they grow out of it and they're fine. These are our little tobacco beds right here. Tobacco is looking pretty good. You saw me transplanting these. I told you guys they'd come through. Even, you know, some of these guys were bitty when I put them in. Look at how nice they look. Getting some tobacco. I actually made a pipe the other day. I figured it's the apocalypse. I might as well take up smoking again. Uh, these are the papayas. You can see I kind of marked them out. These papaya will later be towering over this area by the rainy season. And then back here are more pak choy beds. And this is cucumbers. More cucumbers back there, and then all of the beans up here is Kentucky Wonder Beans. The baby was out here in her little seat earlier watching us garden. But lots and lots of pole beans are going in along with the cucumbers. And I also have the perennial cucumber, Cosinia grandis, back in this corner here, which I saved for the last few years. Can you imagine a cucumber vine that you can save for years? That vine is from a cutting I started three or four years ago, and it's still going. Same vine. So let's go take a look at the, uh, the new gardens we're putting in around the house. So we've got our drainage ditch that runs through here. We got a serious rainfall the other day. We actually had a lot of water wash it through the gardens. But because the beds were a little raised, everything was fine. But I planted bananas all through here. Again, you think in layers, right? You want your quick food, and then you want your food later. This is food for a year from now. So I've got different banana plantain varieties in here at close to eight foot spacing. Some of them are eight to 10, some are like seven. Just kind of tucked them in. And then the kids put beds in between and they're growing some of their own food. So we've got, uh, these pumpkins actually came up from somewhere. Some of them got transplanted, some of them just popped up on their own. And the kids put in uh, tomato transplants, pepper transplants, and then we're going to fill these gaps in over here. The canistel tree that I planted over the poor deceased rabbit is starting to grow. And it's actually making a really nice growth pattern. Right now, I could grow annuals around it. But in a couple of years, it's going to be too big. It'll, it'll cover everything. But you see how it's making all these branches? This is just what I wanted. Normally, I would prune to get this effect. I want it to go branching up and sideways rather than going straight up. But I didn't even have to fight that apical dominance. Boom. Looking good. All right, let's go over closer to the house. I did more planting over there. So right through here, this is the slab where we're going to be building our main house. I've been planting sweet potatoes. I made these big banks for sweet potatoes. And then I got more sweet potatoes right here. 200 gallons of water storage. I picked up this tank and filled it just in case the water gets shut off. More sweet potatoes here. I put in some beans right here, which haven't come up yet. And then this tree is right in front of our house. I planted kale in here this morning, kale transplants. Stuck a couple of uh, herbs in buckets up here. And then if you come up around here, we started planting our driveway. There was a whole bunch of construction junk right here, like concrete and everything. We tore it all up. We dumped in some good soil. And I put a bunch of compost on it, a ton of compost. All that compost I sifted out from the big pile we made out back. And these are right now sunflowers. And then we have chickpeas planted as an understory on the sunflowers. We'll see how that does. And I have corn planted in this bed with sunflowers in the middle. So this is the beginning of planting the driveway. This was kind of a junk area. And the guys that made the slab I just left a whole bunch of plastic bags and trash and stuff here. So we're kind of cleaning it up and putting in garden beds. But I had all this, all this area. So I figured, you know what, let's just plant it. Right here, this wall is eroding away. So I planted vetiver grass all over it, which has a really thick, strong root system. Hopefully it'll hold back the erosion and kind of level it out over time. Then up here, we made these little rock gardens and we put in transplants. Uh, this whole area has gotten planted. 
There's still a bunch of junk here that we threw down, but um, this this rock wall has been debushed, and there's a few cactus because one of my sons collects cactuses. But there are transplants all through here. These are uh, Hungarian heart tomatoes, and I've got some sunflowers in the back row, and then there are transplants here. This is Chinese kale. Chinese kale all through here, and we've been sticking in cauliflowers and cabbages too, but I can't tell which ones are which until they get a little bigger. We have gotten absolutely plenty of rain. It was it was getting real dry, and we put in a rain barrel, and the kids prayed it would rain, and then it poured. We got so much water, we almost filled a 600 gallon tank off of half of my 12 by 16 roof. So. Everything up here is really green. It's about time for me to come up here with the string trimmer and cut in between the corn. Because you can see the corn in stations here. Corn with pigeon peas, corn with pigeon peas, all the way up through. The ones that didn't come up, the stations we replanted. We figure, well, if there's four of them in a group or three of them in a group, they'll pollinate each other. And then up through the top, I went ahead and planted all around the bananas that are up there too. So this whole area now, mostly grain corn and we put in some pumpkins and in some of these hills let me see if I can find one for you in some of these hills there are moringa coming up as well somebody said why don't you plant moringa you know do you have any moringa yeah well we only moved here in December oh there's got to be a moringa around here somewhere Where's I put that moringa, Rachel? I can't find that moringa. What the hell? What that moringa right in here? All right. So when we started running out of pigeon peas, I had one of the kids stick uh, moringa, and so we, we planted new corn here, with moringa as well. So we're intercropping corn and moringa. We'll see how that goes. It's lots of fun. Maybe the end of the world, but we're gonna keep experimenting until the locusts eat us. So, yeah, this is looking good, huh? I mean, I've got stations all the way through here. You can't really see where I planted all the corn because the weeds are starting to grow really fast because of all the rain. But that's fine. It keeps the corn really happy. And when it gets about this tall, I've been throwing a little bit of fertilizer on it. Um, and we've been saving urine so I can water it with that. Uh, mix it with water, like six parts water, one part urine. It's a really good foliar feed. It's just... Uh, you know, you just have to do it. It's kind of gross, you know, so. Um, let me show you one more thing because no matter what's going on, uh, the plants don't really care, the birds don't really care, and the world will continue because the Lord is in control. And cool things keep happening out here as I'm trying to scramble and plant staples and make sure I have enough calories in the ground for my kids. I keep finding cool new things. So let me show you a cool thing. Maybe it'll encourage you. So right here, this is the Suriname cherry that I planted in the edible hedge, and it is making fruit for the very first time. This is a seedling plant, and uh, a friend of mine gave it to me. I had given him some uh, chocolate pudding fruit, and he turned around and he said, "Oh, you got to take one of these, and oh, you got to take a loquat." And I was so excited. I saw it blooming, and now it's now it's really it's going to make a bunch of cherries, which is cool. Which means I can plant the pits from the cherries and then make more of them. So, you know, nature keeps going on. We're going to keep going on. Things are going to, we're going to come through this. It's going to be a tough time. And there's going to be a Great Depression, almost certainly. I mean, I was expecting it for a long time. They only papered over the last crisis. Uh, everybody is so in debt that it only takes a few weeks out of commission for a company to go under. You know, um, they just, <laughs> if, they, if everybody's grounded for a few months, boom, everything blows up. So it's a very exciting time. There's a lot of opportunities. But um, like I said before, it's not in our hands. It's in God's hands. We don't trust in our own hands. And, and, and the guy on that last video who commented, um, it literally is in our hands. We have to wash our hands and then we'll be fine. You, that is so stupid. That is so stupid. Sure, you can wash your hands. You could try to keep yourself from getting COVID-19, the bat virus. 
You could, you could, you could do that, sure. Yeah, wash your hands. But you can't turn back a global depression. You can't control people buying all the toilet paper. You can't control what your government is going to do, or if you're going to get a chance to fly, or if, 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 if. There are so many ifs, it's not in your hands. You can do what you can with your hands. It's ultimately in God's hands. You do your very best, and you keep pushing. But don't be an idiot. It's not in your hands. Totally not. You can't add a day to your life by worrying either, so don't worry. But, you know, it's just, don't, you know, you do the very best that you can, and you push through, and you don't panic. Um, you know, fear not, for I am with you, the Lord says. So, and it also says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So, where does the spirit of fear come from? If it doesn't come from God, <laughs> you tell me. So, no, nah, I'm not worried. You guys shouldn't be worried either. Just plant your gardens, do the best you can, enjoy the time with your families. Uh, kids are out of school. You know, you yeah, have very few social obligations at this point. It's a great time to garden. It's like paradise. You just garden and garden and garden until one day you fall d No. No, we're not going to say that. No. I quit eating bats a couple of weeks ago, so we're good. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, be sure to subscribe and hang around. I'm going to try and do some more survival gardening. Um, uh, leave me questions. I'll do the best to answer. I'm sorry that I haven't been around much because I've been gardening almost all the time and we don't have consistent internet here. I actually have to go out in public to, uh, to access Wi-Fi, which is a little harrowing right now. So, you know, leave me comments. I do read that. I do have the YouTube uh, app on my phone so I could follow you guys. Also, in the, the below this video, I know I gave away anybody that's a channel subscriber or who is subscribes to me on Patreon, I gave you guys the EPUB and the um, if you're, a me if you're a member of this channel, that means that you, you're a subscribe at $5 a month. I gave away the audiobook and the uh, EPUB of Grow or Die, The Good Guide to Survival Gardening. But um, I don't feel good just leaving that in, in... And for those of you that may not be subscribing or giving on Patreon or anything, uh, this is a tough time for everybody, so I am just going to give away the EPUB to anybody that wants it. Um, it's It's... The book has sold really well. It's got a lot of great reviews, and um, you know, I, I this is not a time for me to make money. So I'm going to give it to you guys. So you can just go to the link below this video, and you can go and add it to the cart, and just put in the the code. This code is going to last until the I think it's like a few days into next month. But my publisher has allowed me to give it away. So. You can get, at least get the EPUB version, and for those of you that are, you know, want the audiobook version or whatever, you can get it off of my Patreon and all that. But most of you guys, you know, you're just going to get, you're just, you're just going to want to read it and figure it out. So you could read it, and it is, it's a EPUB. If you don't, um, if you don't have the ability to read an EPUB and you want a PDF or something like that, download a program called Caliber. It will convert the book into whatever format you want. Caliber. It's it's free. It's like Calibre, that's what it looks like. So um, download that, you can convert it to however you want it. It's not copyright protected or whatever else. Print it out, stick it in your house if you're afraid the internet's gonna collapse and then you've got um, a lot of my advice on survival gardening. And of course, stay tuned here and I'll keep giving you what I, ha what I can. So anyhow, thanks for watching. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. Wash your hands, wash your hands, say you're with me, wash your hands. Got to be the craziest thing the world's ever seen. Step up to the stage, MC COVID-19. Time to secure your water supply. And it's time to plant staples and grow or die. Die, 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 die. Plant your nutrition crops and give them all they need. Compost everything the soil to feed. Indeed, it's a global pandemic. The stocks are doomed. Well, the bankers panic. 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 Wash your hands. 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 W
Cause I'm deep to the G I'm on a roll like your hoarded TP Better God like a boss just to stay alive Planting your patio, your lawn, and your planting in the drive Potatoes and corn, cassava, yams and beans Tops are getting lean, but our thumbs are green Count on God, don't count on man Plant up good gardeners and trust the plan Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, say you're with me. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, say you're with me. Wash your hands.